Sure, I will, I will try my level best to stick to them. Thank you very much, first of all. Uh, thank you very much for the jury members and everyone uh, for giving me the opportunity to present my work in front of you guys today. Uh, so I will quickly uh, jump into presenting my work. So just to start with, uh, the title of my thesis was uh, looking at success factors uh, for adopting hyper automation technologies uh, you know, in a large conglomerate, basically it's a case study. So just to jump into the presentation structure, <clears throat> I will talk about myself, then definitely the case study I have picked up, uh, the research question, the managerial context and problem, uh, looking at literature review, uh, and followed by research methodology, data collection and findings. And definitely uh, the conclusion will be on managerial recommendations. So just to start out uh, with myself, I have around 20 plus years of uh, work experience now. Uh, worked in multiple industries, uh, starting from uh, banking to consulting into real estate, retail, uh, hospitality, and so on. Uh, my education background is I've already um, I have uh, three master degrees, one in project management, one is in global business MBA. Uh, and my primary focus of my uh, work for the last two plus decades is in digital transformation, transforming organizational core processes back end and definitely at the front end customer digital journeys. Uh, so I've been associated with uh, such large names over my career uh, for the last two decades. So that's just an overview about me. Now just to uh, introducing the jury and everyone about the case study I have picked up. So this is one of the largest property development companies globally. Uh, they are the property development business which uh, starts from the core real estate uh, the residential properties to shopping centers into hospitality and so on. They have a presence in 36 international markets. They are into business for the last 26 plus years now. They have a large asset book which is uh, around 33.2 billion US dollars uh, and they are considered as one of the technology leader when it comes to the real estate business within the region and globally. So this is just to shed some light on the case study. If we look at now the managerial context and the problem I was looking at during my case study, uh, which was like, and what are the adoption challenges organizations are facing when it comes to hyper automation technologies? Because um, when I was looking at this piece during my uh, initial research, I was not able to find a lot of literature around it, which is typically popping up now today, uh, when we see now post COVID where hyper automation technologies uh, now are accelerating their adoption in organizations. So I was looking at key success factors. What are those key success factors which are playing a very significant role in hyper automation adoption in these organizations? So uh, this was like uh, one of the energy managerial context. The organizational context was like how, what is the complexity which is faced by this organization which is like termed as alpha during the case study? What were the challenges they were facing during the adoption because uh, I will be talking about further more during the study, like where they established, tried to establish a COE in 2015, uh, but unfortunately it didn't uh, took a pick up until 2020, until where really they started looking at the failures and they started looking at what can be the success factor for this adoption. And the other piece is that there were a large program failures in the region and the globally, which was observed basically where hyper automation programs were failing. Uh, and this is like one, one of the very key uh, thing which was studied during my study. Now if I look at the detail in the research question, uh, so the, this is like what are the key success factors which explain the hyper automation technology adoption in the back end operational and customer facing processes. Uh, and the primary objective was to look at existing literature, definitely gather some new data, uh, part of the case study then uh, do a data analysis and try to see what are the success factors which were identified during the literature review and they are also confirmed by the data and plus what are the new success factors which has emerged out of this study uh, which was conducted on the period of last two plus years. Now to uh, give a context to the uh, adoption and success factors, so like adoption is definitely explained as like it's, it's, it's a date at which uh, either the customers or organizations adopt a new technology basically within the organization, uh, like how easy, convenient it is for them and how receptive it is to their organizational needs. 
Whereas when we look at the success factors, it's a, again a very vital, uh, vital uh, aspect of adoption basically. This is basically what they are contributing to the successful implementation of a particular technology within an organization which can be like ERP, CRM or anything. So these are like two of the very key aspects uh, during my research. Now if we look at the literature review, uh, the initial literature review was conducted. I have studied around 200 plus articles uh, looking at how we delegate and hyper automation, um, different uh, study methods for, uh, or sources were used like a VSCO, ResearchGate and Google Scholar and so on. So one ProQuest, multiple uh, the scholar databases were consulted to look at the existing literature. Uh, and this is where I think so the gap was identified that there is uh, a gap is there, uh, in terms of uh, literature available which is explaining the success factor which contributes to the adoption of hyper automation. Simultaneously, uh, the success models were looked into uh, from DNIT to TA and to TOE basically to look at that which uh, uh, literature or ICE model will be looked at which will be used for this particular study. Uh, so the TOE model was selected looking at the problem at hand and how this can be detected and how this can be handled because like uh, the problem at hand was studied with three dimensions which was definitely technology, organization and environment and look at like how we can categorize the challenges, how we can categorize the success factors based on these three categories. So the beginning was where like those challenges were identified, they were plotted on the QA model and simultaneously the literature was reviewed and uh, the categories was created and those success factors were plotted which were identified in the literature on all those three dimensions to start with. So this is where what research, the research methodology selected was qualitative methods to do that, the positive test uh, approach was uh, uh, selected and the case study method was uh, selected because the problem was this research problem to be studied in multiple organizations in a much wider context was very difficult in the span of time we were looking for to conducting this study. So this is where a very narrow and uh, niche scope was identified where this problem would be studied. And this is like how it looked like that literature review was done, data gathering was done. From there on, we moved to data analysis where the key success factors were identified, coding was performed, and then the find, findings started emerging out of that data. <clears throat> if we just move to data collection and analysis, there were 30 plus uh, participants were invited, 27 agreed. Uh, to become uh, and provide in the, you know, insights into the data and provide data. Uh, these participants were selected from different 35 plus different line of businesses from the group, uh, including the UAE International um, and, and definitely the data collection was done using teams because like we're talking about post COVID era where like the social distancing was still in, uh, in place and the data analysis tool used was in vivo. Uh, for looking at performing thematic analysis of all those 27 plus uh, interviews conducted. So this is like how the data was gathered and processed during uh, you know, the, the course of study. When we look at data numbers, so the total success factors which were identified in the technology domain were seven, uh, three were identified in the literature review, they are also confirmed by uh, the data itself. Uh, there are three newly identified uh, uh, success factors have emerged out of this study. Uh, one success factor which was identified in literature was not confirmed by during uh, you know, the data gathering. If you look at the organizational dimension, there were 39 uh, success factors identified, nine during the literature review uh, and definitely confirmed by data and 30 plus identified as new uh, uh, success factors. And then when we look at uh, the success factors for the environmental piece, there were total 30. Uh, again, 11 were uh, confirmed during uh, the literature review and the data gathering, and two are identified as a new uh, success factor during this study. So this is just to talk about the data summary and numbers. Now, when we look at at a very high level, uh, you know, the research findings, uh, you can see these clouds which we'll talk about, which are the larger ones, basically, so we can see that on the organizational side, uh, the study was able to contribute a lot of success factor, which we are talking about business impact, uh, productivity, efficiency improvement, 
uh, employee impact, investment in technology, and so on. And simultaneously, there was certain success factors which were around technology piece, which was cloud adoption. We're talking about automation platforms. Integrated platform was one of the very key thing talked about by multiple uh, respondents. Uh, and definitely then there are multiple environmental success factors which are talking about infrastructure investments while uh, the country and the organization, marketing conditions, regulatory requirement because a lot of things are driven by uh, regulatory and compliance frameworks uh, to get, uh, the hyper automation uh, adoption is getting accelerated in organizations. Now if we move to manager recommendations, so there are like uh, high level six uh, manager recommendations uh, coming out of this particular study when we look and evaluate. So the one of the first key piece is that we need to first evaluate the processes organizations uh, are looking at implementing using hyper automation technology because like, we need to really see if the processes are the right fit because if they are not uh, uh, very high volume and very uh, low in uh, uh, needing uh, human intervention it's very difficult for these hyper automation technologies to provide a scale or provide a return on investment to business where they can implement uh, these technologies. Definitely, the next piece is prioritization. We need to look at like which use cases will be the low hanging fruit, which can be prioritized in this domain, uh, which can be picked up and provide a very, very quick return of investment, which will definitely create a, uh, a level of confidence within the organization. The other piece is the strategy. So the strategy has to be built as a short term and long term. The goals have to be identified uh, and, and a very clear map has to be there. If you see one of the shortfalls in the Alpha organization was when the original COEs was established in 2015, there was no strategy defined. It was more like the technical kind of a solution which they were trying to implement uh, on different business uh, shortcomings or solution shortcomings or, or, or processes shortcomings. So this is where like, they faced a lot of challenge around that piece. The other is the engagement. Just like any other uh, technology engagement within an organization, uh, engagement from top to bottom is very much required because these technologies tend to have a very negative impact, uh, specifically on the bottom side of the organization where people think that these technologies like RPA, IoT, and AI are working in and they are going to take away the people's job. So this is where I think so the message has to be very clear. That this is there to augment and this is not there to replace humans because like it's going to do a very low end job in organizations and absorbing people off doing those repetitive tasks every day. And another very large and major piece is change management. Uh, because like uh, if the change is not properly handled with the organization transforming from human based workforce to digital workforce, um, this is this is going to create uh, havoc within organization if the change management is not handled properly. And this is where I think so change management and again the role of a strategy or the program governance uh, office comes very key uh, over here in the adoption of uh, hyper automation. And the last piece is improvement. Definitely it's not something static. Uh, this needs to be uh, clearly keep on getting improvised. So like if you build a process to it, just like any uh, other process uh, initiative, it has to go through a continuous improvisation cycle where uh, a continuous improvement on those build processes has to happen in the longer run and then keep on uh, upgraded and keep on increasing the efficiency level uh, within the automation itself. <clears throat> so last piece is on the conclusion side. If we look at uh, some of the key pieces out of this uh, exercise was looking at uh, the current literature limitation basically which was identified uh, uh, I was not able to find a lot of literature which specifically type talks about uh, the success factors for the adoption of hyper automation there's a lot of literature available which talks about the advantages of hyper automation technologies but unfortunately there's not much available which talks about the success factors uh, there is not much research available today uh, on this topic. Uh, there's a lot of research available around success factors uh, which are there for adoption of ERP, CR and other technologies, but hyper automation is a pretty new concept. The other, uh, the other key thing is that now uh, certain success factors are identified 
part of this key study. Uh, there is a good mix uh, between the TOE three dimensions where we are able to identify and plot these research factors uh, and which now clear, I think so, a pathway which brings me to the next point, which is the future research opportunities because this will now pave a way for a lot of uh, future research where researchers can look at, identify, I think so on a much more wider scale that this research factors are uh, viable for other organizations or other industries. Uh, plus, like they can look at like how much impact they create when they are looked at during uh, an implementation in a hyper automation study. So what kind of impact? Is? So I think so there are a lot of opportunities available for a future research out of it. And then definitely a lot of adoption challenges were indirectly looked at during this study. This is where my new literature review, a lot of things were identified using existing literature that why organizations are today facing a lot of challenges uh, when they are looking for and embarking on the journey to adopt hyper automation across the organization. And I think so the last and uh, not the least piece is the organizational and employee impact. So I think so there are certain pieces over here which were again a byproduct of the study itself where like certain areas were highlighted that how organizations and employees are getting impacted by the adoption of hyper automation. So this is where like how the efficiency improvement is happening, uh, how the organizations are able to reap more ROI benefit, they're able to service their customers more better on digital channels because the response times have been critically reduced by implementing these hyper automation technologies. So this is where uh, uh, this this makes a greater impact, I think, so in, in terms of studying uh, all these challenges. And this brings me down uh, to the last piece, which is definitely uh, the comments and, and the questions. 